the morning class, take out a sheet of paper, all right? Because things we're going to go off are, are things that really going to affect you far as your future and in your life, all right? So just some real life application of what we're about to learn, all right? So get out a sheet of paper, take these notes, because you definitely will need these notes, all right? Pay attention to things I tell you, because if you look on some of the examples of any other assignments, they might not have the, the same kind of uh, formulas that I have. So really pay attention to this video. You really need to. All right, so we're going to go over notes, and title notes is going to be on compound interest. Okay, it's like mostly when you're uh, saving money in a bank account, a thing, buying things with credit card, buying cars, and things like that. Okay, we use what we call the compound interest formula. And that compound interest formula is A equals P, parentheses, 1 plus R over N raised to N times T. Okay, thing is you need to know what each variable represents. Okay, the A stands for the amount in your account. Okay, the P stands for the principal. And what principal means is the amount to start with. Okay. This here is a number one, that's not a variable, okay? So that's a one, so let's make sure we understand that's a one. All right, the R is your interest rate. Okay, or your percent, okay? And remember when you work in math, you gotta always change your percent to a decimal. The N is for the number of times compounded. meaning how many times in a year they're going to add your interest onto your account, okay? And you see that the N is in two places, so wherever it goes in the N, that number has to go in both of these places, okay? And then we have the T, it stands for time and years, okay? So it's very important that your time is in years because if we're talking about how much is in your account after six months, you don't put six in there because six months, it's half a year, so you got to put in a half, okay? So, again, that's very important. The time is in years, okay? Now, as far as the what's being compounded, we have different ways of compounding, okay? Let's go that All right, so you're compounding. Again, these are things you need to know. Okay, you can have it annually. That's one time a year. Semi annual. That's two times a year. Okay, so every six months they add the interest onto your account. Yeah, quarterly, which is four times a year. Monthly, it's 12 times a year. Bi-weekly, which is every other week, it's 26. And weekly, would have added on every week, that'd be 52. And then you can have it as daily. Every day, you're 365, okay? So, again, make sure you have all that down, okay? And if you need to pause the video, pause that so you can write all this down, okay? Because, again, you need to know this, and I will not have all this listed on the test, right? Okay? Again, these are things you need to know. Again, when you start your bank account, these are things that you need to know how to do. All right, so let's give an example, all right? So let's, let's say that... Uh, Say, Corey, put $2,000 in a savings account. A 
compounds. Interest quarterly at six point two percent. Okay, say so he wants to know how much will he earn in seven years? Okay. Okay, so now again we're gonna use that formula. So A equals P one plus R over N N times T. So we gotta put things in the right spots. All right, so A, that's the amount we're trying to find out. Okay, principal. What did we start with? Of course, started with two thousand dollars. So two thousand would go where the P is, one plus. Now your R is your percent. Now remember your percent has to be as a decimal. So we gotta change this percent to a decimal. Remember, you move it over two places. So when I go over one. And two, you need to add a zero. So your R would be 0 0.062. Okay. Over N. Remember, N is number of times compounded. So it says compounds interest quarterly. Okay. So from your previous notes, we said quarterly is how many years? How many times in the year? Four. So four would go where the N is. So I'd have to put a four down here. And as my exponent, four up here also times t remember t is time in years so if you try to see how much he has in seven years it's going to be seven okay now i always feel it's best that you go ahead and you multiply that out okay makes it easier because four times seven gives you 28 so when you do this you're going to raise it to the 28th power okay so that's how we got 28 all we did was multiply to four times seven okay so now all you need to do here is your order of operations okay so if I do my order of operations, I'm going to do inside the parentheses first. Okay, so I'm going to do 1 plus 0 0.062 divided by 4. Get that answer. Equals, right? So did parentheses, then exponent. We're going to raise this number here to the 28th power. All right, so if you had it, if you got the caret button, Remember, that's how you raise it to another power. Okay, you can use on Desmos. They have all of those buttons to raise to a power, so you can do that. Okay, the other thing, good thing on Desmos, you can put it in just like it is, and it will solve it for you. So I'm going to take, now I'm going to do my carrot, and take that, raise it to 28 power, 28. Okay, make sure you press equal afterwards, okay? So we've done parentheses, exponent, then after that, we're going to multiply. So it'll be times 2,000. So put times 2,000. And right here you have your answer. Now remember, this is we're talking about money. So we're talking about round it to the nearest cent. That means two numbers after the decimal. So since the third number is eight, that instead of 57 cent, it'll be 58 cent. Okay, again, that's important. So when you go to the bank, you don't want them rounding off your money. Okay. So in seven years, he would have three thousand. Seventy-six dollars and fifty-eight cent. Okay. So the question was, how much did he earn? Okay, that's how much he had. So to figure out how much he earned, all you need to do is take that and subtract the two thousand. So he earned $1,076.58. Okay. That's how much he earned. Okay. Okay. Let's do another example real quick. Let me show you. Really going to pay attention. All right. So let's say this time we have a problem where, uh, let's say, Zariah. Okay, so she bought a car, for $14,000. Okay, the value of the car, 
So if the value depreciates four percent annually, okay, annually. What is the value of the car after four years? Okay. If you did not know that uh, that a car depreciates depreciates means to go down in value. Okay. So that's a very key word, right? So you might need to have that in your notes and underline that, okay? Or something depreciates. So really the same, same thing, same format, everything's the same. Using the same formula, okay? So the formula is going to be A equals P. Instead of 1 plus R over N, it's going to be 1 minus R over N, okay? So again, when you see that depreciated, anything's going down in value, it's going to be 1 minus instead of 1 plus, okay? Still n times t. All right. So again, put things in the, in, the, in the right spot. So principal, what it starts out with? The car started at fourteen thousand. One minus. Okay. Four percent as a decimal. Remember, go over two places. So it'll be point zero four over n. How many times compound it says annually? So every year. So annually is one. So one goes on there, also one times t, how many years? It'll be four, one times four is four. Okay, so that's how I got that. Okay, so remember, we're gonna put that into the calculator. Again, order of operations. So we'll put the one plus, I mean, one, one, the one minus. Okay, so if you put it into the calculator right, the value of that car would be 11000 $11,890.85. Okay. All right, so again, those are things you need to know because when you are out there and you're buying a used car, you want to know what the value is. You want to be paying more than what value of the car is. That's what they that's what they get come out the uh the blue book value and stuff like that. Okay, so let's look at a problem here from one of your uh Delta math assignments. Okay, so again same kind of concept. Well this one's talking about an element with mass 420 grams decays by 11.8 percent per minute. How much of element is remaining after 16 minutes to the nearest tenth of a gram. Okay, so again, we use the same formula. As I said, really pay attention to this video. Okay, use the things that I'm showing you. Show you how this all this works. All right, I'm just about to show you. Okay, so again, using the same formula. A equals p one plus over n n times t. Right. All right. So let's so element with mass. What does it start with? Start with 420. So that's what the principle. 420. I said decays okay so instead of one plus we're gonna do one minus now your percent 11.8 percent is going to be 0.118 okay and then all these is annually when you do that okay and again it's per minute so how much of the element remaining after 16 minutes so your time again now when we're talking about things like this all right, because we're not talking about money in a bank account. All right, so this would be whatever the, the units that we're talking about. So it's talking about per minute. All right, that's why this is important. So since it's 16 minutes, you put a 16 as your exponent. All right, now if they said how much in an hour, remember since with units were in minutes, you would have to use 60. Okay, so now when you put that into the calculator, Okay, 
Okay, you sh they said to the nearest tenth, so that's the first number after the decimal. So we should have 56.3 grams. Okay. Okay, now the last one, last thing I want to go over is whenever you have an account that continues continuously. Okay, that's very important. Okay, because when it's something that, that's continuously, uh, like something like bacteria, if you're familiar with that when in chemistry, where some of bacteria grow, that grows continuously, okay, instead of the compound interest formula, you use a different formula. And that formula is just like the shampoo, A equals it's pert. P E raised to the R T power. Okay. Now, P still still means the same thing as far as what it starts with. The R is your percent. Now, you see it's in a different spot. Still, T is still your time. But now, E, this is not a variable. Even though it looks like a variable, right? It's not a variable. It's another, another number, okay? All right? And E is approximately 2.71, okay? And so on. Just like pi goes on forever, E is a number that goes on forever, okay? So... When you're doing a problem that says continuously, that's why you got to look for that. But you're going to use this formula here. Okay, I'm giving a quick example. Let's say that uh, that twenty-five twenty-five grams of a substance. Grows continuously at 8.4 percent. Each minute. Okay. How much will it grow in one hour? Okay. So again, we're gonna use this formula here. So P, what it starts with is the twenty-five. Then we got the E. We're gonna raise that to the R times T. So percent is going to be 0.8. Gonna remember go over two places. So be 0 0.084 times t your time. Now if it grows each minute, how many minutes in, in one hour? Yes, 60. Okay. So I'm putting in parentheses like that. Okay. So now when you do this in the calculator. Okay. You can see on the calculator here, the little e to the x, okay? You should see that on there, all right? Also, I know it's definitely on on uh, on Desmos, okay? So I'm going to do my power first. I'm going to do e, but now I see it says blue, so I'm going to put a second first. Second. Okay. And I'm going to put that in 0 0.084 times 60. Okay. That gives me that number. All right. So that's what E raised to that power gives me. 154 point that, right? And then after that, I'm going to multiply times 25. So that 25 grams now is 3,861.8. So 3,861.8 grams. Okay. Right, again, the more that you do this, the easier it's going to get. All right. So if you need more help, 
sign up for office hours okay and again we'll uh, get you through this all right again let's do your best again i'm there for you because trust me i do want you to pass